Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a quiz app in Unity and welcome to episode 6. In this tutorial we are going to get our answer buttons functioning as intended. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships. We'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So we're going to create another script for this series. And this one is going to contain all the scripts that we're going to use for all four answer buttons down here here. Now this one is going to be kind of different um, in terms of the setup simply because it's going to be an interactive script more than anything because we need feedback from our buttons so if we press A we need something to actually happen that relates to that button. So let's start by right clicking create C sharp script call it answer buttons and let's open it up in Visual Studio. So as I said, there is going to be a couple of variables that we're going to use. Um, so we're going to need to use um, the backgrounds of those buttons more than anything, simply because we need to get some feedback to say that, yep, it's the right answer or nope, it's the wrong answer. So let's start by dealing with just question, uh, rather answer box A. So public. And uh, this is going to be a game object. And this is going to be the light blue background that we have for the button. And I'm sure I mentioned it earlier in the series. Yes, there are different ways of doing this kind of thing. But I wanted to do it this way just to kind of help a lot of people um, get coding a bit more understood, if, if you get what I mean, because coding is always the thing that stops people from making a lot of games these days. Um, so the more coding we do, the more I feel it will help people in the long run. So we need to do a variable for the blue, the green, and the red. So let's have a public game object, and we'll put answer A and back blue and we will copy that line of code place it here and there and instead of having answer a back blue all the time we change this to green and we'll change this to red and what i'm also going to do is i'm going to put some annotations at the end so double slash there and we can say blue is waiting so we're waiting to answer green is correct and finally this one here we'll say red is wrong now we're not going to use uh, void start or void update in this we're going to create a completely new methods like I say, this is going to be a little bit different than what we've done previously. So we can get rid of those two methods and those annotations. And we're going to create a method specifically for the answer A button. So this can be called anything you want, but you should probably make it relevant to what we're doing. So we need to put the word public before the word void. The reason we do that is because this is a button, we need that button to understand where to pull information from and how to function correctly. So we need to make this method public within the script. So public void answer a, open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now, key thing to this is to make sure that we are getting the correct answer now what i mean by that is if we go to question generate we say here what the actual answer is and we need to then determine if it is correct so we need to put if and in brackets question generate dot and then if we scroll down or up i should say sorry to actual answer double click it and then we put equals and then quote a close bracket open curly bracket so what we've said here is 
Is the correct answer A if we're pressing the A button? If it is, then what we need to do is we need to turn off the blue background and turn on the green background. So answer A back green dot set active and in brackets true. And then we also need to turn the blue one off, like I say. So answer A back blue dot set active false semicolon and save. And realistically, it's as simple as that. <clears throat> there is nothing much more to this. I mean, ultimately, this script is going to be a little bit longer, but it's not going to be complex. It's always going to be static in terms of are we pressing the right thing or not? And if we are, we go to the next one. If we're not, then move on, whatever. So let's just test for now that this does indeed work. So we know that A is the correct answer. So when we press A after reading the question, it means that it should highlight green. So let's head back into Unity. Let's wait for it to compile. Now we need to add that answer button script to our master control. We also need to make sure that the answer A button does indeed have the correct method attached to it. So if we click answer A and scroll down here, and you'll see here, list is empty. We need to click on plus. <clears throat> now what we need to do is we need to tell it where the script is and where the method is. So here where you've got non object, we can drag and drop master control onto there. And you'll see no function highlight. If we click that drop down list, we can then go down to our answer button script and then we can select answer A. That now means that the script we've just written, that little method, will now work with this A button. So if we press play and click on A, ah, of course, it does usually help if you apply the variables. Now, this is a great example of if you have an error or something isn't working in Unity, you'll see this red down the bottom to say something is wrong. This is a great opportunity to go into the console and see what could be wrong. It says here, you probably need to assign the answer A back green variable of the answer button script in the inspector, which is exactly what we need to do. So it just goes to show how useful that console can be, not just for script errors, but for anything in general. So let's clear that, head back into project. Let's make sure we are on master control. And let's add these three variables. So open panel is going to be the blue one. Correct panel is going to be the green one. And the wrong panel is going to be the red one. And now if we press play again, we shouldn't have that same problem. So let's click the correct answer. Cool, we've got the right answer. Now, obviously these other scripts on the buttons, won't, they won't do anything just yet. Um, reason being is we need to code them. So let's get into coding them. Let's go back into our answer buttons. Now we can use the same sort of method here. So I'm going to copy all of that method, public void answer A. I'm going to place it just below and I'm going to change it to public void answer B. And if question generate dot actual answer equals B, which it isn't. So this is where we now need to think a little more about what we're doing. So if the actual, actual answer is B, if it was B, then we would set answer B back green and answer B back blue. Now they have come up as an error. Why do you think they've come up as an error? Of course, because we've not declared them as variables. So we will have to declare them as variables. But what happens if we press B and it isn't the correct answer? Well, that's where we need to put an else statement for that. So underneath, let's then type, not in capitals, else, and then open curly bracket and press return. Now what this will do is it's basically a true or false. If this is correct, do this, otherwise do this. And what we want to do is we want to say, basically copy those two lines of code and instead of green, we want red. And again, because those are not set as variables, they still come 
as errors. So let's set them as variables now. So let's copy those three variables. Let's place them here. And we can say B, B, B. So now what this is saying is if we press B and it isn't correct, then we end up say, uh, setting that on instead of this. And obviously we do need to do the same for uh, a as well, simply because, you know, the answer could be B and we've pressed A. So we also need to put up here, not in caps again, else, and then we can copy those two, place them here, and instead of green, red, and save. Now, before we go any further and do C and D, let's make sure that B does indeed highlight in red. So let's head back into Unity. Let's click on Master Control, and we just need to attach those right there. So let's go on to B and open, correct, and wrong. Now there are going to be some errors as it stands now because we could click multiple buttons, but again, don't worry about that for now. Once we get into sequencing, everything will work as intended. So let's press play and check out B. Okay, now does anyone know why that didn't work? Hopefully. Well done guys, you got it. It's because we didn't apply that method to the button. So obviously the script is there, but if the method isn't applied to the button, like we did with A, then that won't work. So once again, we go down to where it says list is empty, click plus, drag and drop master control, click no function, click on answer buttons and click on answer B. So that's a quick, awesome way of just applying that script to the button. So now when we press play and try clicking B, nope, it's wrong. Obviously it's wrong because, well, it's not none, it's lots and lots. And you can see there what I mean by it's kind of an error. It's allowed us to press two buttons when we really shouldn't have. But like I say, when sequencing comes, we can alter that as necessary. So let's head back into our answer button script and let's quickly add in all the rest. So we need C and D. So we can copy paste those and then we can put C, C, C and then D, D, D. And obviously when you get around to coding and you become much more proficient in it, you can do things so much more quicker. You can even do it while you're talking just like I am right now. And I'm not necessarily paying massive amounts of attention, but you can see what I'm doing here. All I'm doing is changing everything relating to the previous question, or rather the previous button, to the current button. So let's do D, D, uh, D there, D there, D there, D, and D. So if you do have any problems with how these buttons work, just double check that you do have all the relative buttons in the relative methods. So this should only ever relate to C, at least at the moment. So let's once again head back into Unity, head to the master control object, and just apply those variables. So on C, we've got three right there, and then on D as well. Nice and simple. So obviously we still have to apply the method to each button. So once again, onto the button, press plus, drag the object, no function, answer buttons, answer C. Again, repeat, master control, onto there, no function, answer buttons, and answer D. Press play. And let's just try answer C right now. There we go. So it's wrong. It's incorrect. So we now have our buttons fully functional. Uh, next tutorial, what I want to do is I want to probably work with them a little bit more and just to make sure that we can't double press buttons. And I also want to add in a font and we'll probably add in a score UI as well. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching guys.